Hey, welcome to a new tutorial. This one is about the node map, which is this map which connects the various encounters in the example game together. And also things like uh, uh, these campfires for healing or these treasure chests for gaining artifacts uh, while going towards the boss. And you have different types of encounters that are from different random encounter tables uh, that you can run into along uh, this path. Uh, you can see it's called, well, it's called the node map because it's made up of all of these nodes and they are connected by these lines or edges as they're called. Um, and you can see that um, these ones that we can move to are highlighted by this animation and when we hold our mouse over them they change color to show that this is the one we can select. If you click it, it will transition into an encounter map and when this encounter is over we will go back to the node map. Here is how the node map looks in the editor uh, and we will want to make a new node map like this from scratch um, and the simplest way to do this is to just make a duplicate of this map and delete the nodes. Uh, if you want to make it completely from scratch you have to take note of the required blueprints that you will need for the node map to function. Uh, but let's go to maps and find the node map and create a tutorial version which I'm going to call node map uh, tutorial. And we'll go into that map. So for this new map let's select all of our nodes and delete them. Uh, be sure to keep the node map blueprint here which is the manager blueprint responsible for keeping track of the actual connections uh, between the nodes and the path that we have moved. Uh, so just click yes all to this because they're referring, uh, referencing each other for the paths. Um, next we'll have to place our origin node or the node where we start when the game begins. Uh, so we'll go into blueprints and node map and we'll find the node blueprint. We can drag that into here. Um, and for the origin you'll have to specify in its uh, details here in its defaults that it is the origin node. And when you do if you hit play uh, you can see that it is crossed out and this is where we're starting and now we have no other nodes to move to so there's really nothing for us to do so we'll have to create some nodes that this one is connected to and that's easy enough let's just drag a couple of other nodes in here uh, and then you can select the original origin node add a couple of connections uh, then hit the drop uh, the eyedropper and choose these nodes. Now it is connected so if we hit play you can see that these are now animating and selecting them will get us into an encounter. Now exactly what kind of encounter are we going into and that depends on what we have specified uh, in the uh, gameplay tags here. So you can see there is some clipping here even though that's also not visible in the game uh, since these are completely flush with the ground we can increase their Z so we can see that more clearly as we are editing. Uh, let's get this sun out of the way. Okay, so selecting one of these you can change the encounter type and you can do that by clicking changing this gameplay tag. So we have access to all of the tags in our project here but the ones that are related to encounters are here listed under the encounter uh, parent tag. So currently it's set to normal so we can change it to something else like an elite encounter uh, or if we want to have a treasure for instance if we now go to this we will get an artifact um, and so on. So there are various kinds of encounters that you can uh, choose between. Before diving into how the node works and how we can change it let's just create a few more nodes so we can just have a mini level. So we'll put like a boss at the end here and we'll have an elite encounter here and like a rest down here and then we connect these together by creating connections so we can connect this up like like so and we can do the same here it's a pretty terrible setup for balance but just for demonstration purposes this should be fine and there we are uh, so now we have our small uh, test map that we can use. So how does this work? When you click this, why do you get into an encounter map? 
And when you click this, why do you get a treasure? And we'll look into the code in BP Node uh, to uh, figure that out. So if we open BP Node, we can see all its code. Uh, so the stuff up here is mostly for setting up visuals and also receiving a message from the node map blueprint um, when this a node has been reached and thus can be activated. Uh, and when the node is activated, it is possible to click it and which will lead to then loading arena maps, etc. And we'll look at that part of the code uh, now. So if the node is clicked and it is currently enabled uh, because we have reached that point, uh, then first we add to the game instance that it has been visited, so we know that in the future. Uh, but here is the part where we look at the gameplay tag and we decide what is to happen based on the gameplay uh, tag that we set here for the node. And you can see for a lot of these it leads to this same part here which is for loading an encounter. Um, and then we have a couple of love others for resting which is healing the hero and then uh, for uh, getting a treasure for getting the artifact. Um, but here we have for loading the encounter. Uh, so first we create a widget for showing the screen is fading to black. So that's this part. Uh, then we do a small delay and then we load the arena. And which arena map we load is also based on the gameplay tag. So you can see all of the various encounters that represent combat maps lead into this and we end up here. And then again we look at the gameplay tag and we set the encounter data uh, based on uh, the particular gameplay tag that is selected. Um, so if it is, uh, and we set then a data table which holds all the various kinds of encounters uh, that we might encounter in that type of node. So if this is an easy encounter, we get the easy data table. If it is a normal encounter, we get the normal data table, etc. And we store this temporarily in this function. And we can take a look at one of these data tables to see how they work. So if I just browse to that asset and we can open the easy encounters. Here you can see that by default, there are two kinds of easy encounters. One of them is called troll and it just includes a single troll. One of them is called two spiders and includes, uh, well, two kinds of spiders, uh, or two of the same spider, really. Uh, so in the encounter, you define what minions you are to encounter, uh, and also what kind of reward you get for beating the encounter. Uh, so I can add a new encounter here to show how that works. So we can add a new one, and we'll call this uh, troll and spider. So you can guess what I'm going to include in this one. So we'll add a minion. And this will be the one that's on the front row. Uh, we'll find it then in minion. So DT uh, minions monsters. And here I can select the troll. Then I can add a new minion. I can just make a copy of this. So I don't have to find the data table again. And then I can select the spider. So then we have that encounter. And then for the reward, we are already, uh, or we have to then select the, um, let's see. Yeah, the unobtainable cards. This should be set by default, really. And maybe it is when you are testing this. And then you can select the type of reward that we get. And the reward really is, as you can see here from the cards data table, uh, this is a card that we play when combat is resolved. And these cards are responsible for things like giving rewards. We will look at this uh, more closely shortly, but Currently, I've shown just how to add another encounter to the easy encounter. So currently, there are three different kinds of encounters in the easy combat encounters data table. So in the node, you can see what it, the node does with this. So we set this local uh, data table. And then from this, we get all of the possible encounters here and select a random one. As you see here, I, can have, a, I have a comment that I want to make this seeded in the future. So if you look at a future update, that might be the case. Uh, and then we just get that particular encounter and tell the game instance to store this encounter so that we can reference it when we load the arena map and then we open the arena map. And you can see that it also gets the level name of the arena that we're opening uh, from the encounter here. So you can change this to uh, reference another 
map that you have if you want to have different kinds of map with different visuals um, for your various encounters.